Earlier in this video series, we saw that you can access the framing rules for walls by going to the framing tools. The same is true for floor systems. If I select a floor system, you can click on framing tools and see the materials and joist spacing for this floor system. If you expand the layers, switch to 3D, and now you can select a floor system, then select the top layer, which is the sheathing layer, and now the framing tools will show the rules for the sheathing layout. To generate the parts, we can select the floor and select Generate Parts. With the floor system expanded, it'll generate both the floor joists and the sheathing at the same time. I'm going to hide the sheathing so that it'll be easier to work on our joist layout. So to do that, I'll go to the modeling tree. We'll expand the floor structure. Right click on sheathing and select hide. So now we can see the joist layout a bit clearer here. And I'm going to select the floor again. And now we can use the functions available in the plane structure tab up in the ribbon toolbar for editing the layout. If you want to change the location of the joist spacing origin, we can use Edit Framing Fields, find the origin marker, which is up here in this top left corner. I'm going to select that marker, then left click on the grab point, and now we can relocate that origin marker by placing it anywhere on the layout. If I want to slide that over, I can lock in the horizontal direction and type in a distance. So let's say, for example, I want to move that over six inches. I'll just type in six, enter. The marker goes in the new location. Now I can right click and select generate parts. So now the layout will update using the new origin marker location. You can also use this function to change the direction of the joists. I'm going to select the marker, select the grab point to pick it up again, and now you can use the arrows on your keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees. You can also right click and select vertical, horizontal, default, or select direction. If we pick horizontal and then place the marker down on the layout, we can just right click again, generate parts, and now the joists will be horizontal. I'm going to go back and change them back to being vertical and place it back on the layout in the original location. I'll hit escape and then we can look at edit framing edges. This function allows you to change the detail on the outside edges or the edges around a hole on your floor system. When you start the function, you'll get these little red triangles on the center of each edge. You can select one, right click, and select properties. This will show you the name of the detail that is currently on that edge, and then you can change it by selecting user detail, hit the drop list, and select a different detail. So for example, if I want to change this from being a header to a double header. I can select the header double detail, click OK, and the edge will get the new parts. I'll hit escape, and then we can look at another function that allows us to add new details within the floor area. The edit framing lines function allows you to add cut lines, support lines, blockings, and ladders. If I want to add a support line, for example, I can then select the start and end point. So let's say I'm going to line it up with this wall here. I'll set my reference point by hitting Q on that center line of the wall, lock it horizontal, and snap to the inside edge of that rim joist. And then I'm going to lock it horizontal again 
run this line all the way over to the inside edge of the opposite rim joist and then left click there and now I can select which detail I want to apply to that support line I'll pick the triple selectable drop beams and when you have a selectable detail we can go to parameters and choose what that material is going to be so by default it's using the same material as the floor system but we can choose a different size then I'll hit escape and we can take a look at the 3D framing model and see what that looks like here you can edit the floor parts the same way we did on the wall panels you can select a piece and be able to grab the midpoint or end points you can right click on those points to get additional functionality you can also double click on a piece to access the properties and this allows you to change what that material is so for example if I want to change just one of those pieces we can then come in here activate the cross-section parameter and then change that to a different size When you have completed your floor framing layout, you can then create the floor schedule. I'm going to go to Output tab and select Schedule. Here you can choose what type of schedule you want to create. I'll just pick the first one, Floor Joists. Click OK. Here you can choose if you're going to add labels, add a schedule, and if you want to create individual part drawings, you can check that off as well. I'm going to leave that turned off and click OK. The labels are added to the layout, and now I have a text block attached to my cursor, which is the schedule. I'm going to left click and place that somewhere on my layout. 